Hello, you are welcome to IDC Learning Center YouTube channel. My name is Mark Okafo. For today's video, we will be looking at JAMB government questions and answers that will definitely help you prepare for JAMB 2023. This is a compilation of past JAMB questions on government, or let's look at it as likely exam questions that you need to know. Let's go straight to the first question, question one. The Standing Committee of a Legislature is one, A, whose members stand while deliberating, B, that has statutory responsibilities, C, that perform ad hoc functions, D, that has legislators as members. For this question, the right answer is C. So let me circle it. Okay, the Standing Committee of a Legislature is one that perform ad hoc functions. Now, I want you to know that Standing Committees are permanent organizations within the House of Representatives and the Senate that perform ad hoc functions. Proposed bills are sent to Standing Committees which debate their purpose and consequences and recommend whether or not those bills should be sent to the floor of each House of Congress for full debate and votes. So we can just say that an ad hoc means when necessary or needed. Question two. Where the Constitution is supreme, unconstitutional acts of the executive and the legislature can be checked by the courts through a recall, b judicial review, c vote of no confidence, d impeachment. The right answer here is b. Let me circle it, which is judicial review. Where the constitution is supreme, unconstitutional acts of the executive and the legislature can be checked by the courts through judicial review. So, judicial review is judicial power to declare any actions of the executive and the legislature unconstitutional, null and void. Question 3. The central decision-making organ of a confederation is made up of a technocrats appointed by the units, b. Politicians elected from the confederal constituencies, c. Politicians nominated by the government of member states, d. Representatives of pressure groups. Alright, I want you to know that the central decision-making organ of a confederation is made up of politicians nominated by government of member states. There is even no central because the legislature of the confederating states remain and made laws for the units. Therefore, the right answer is C. So politicians nominated by the government of member states. Question 4. Which of the following is true of a parliamentary system of government? A. Clear separation of government organs. B. Street operation of bicameral legislature. C. Removal of government by impeachment. D. Adherence to majority rule. The right answer is D. A parliamentary system of government, okay, which of the following is true? Adherence to majority rule. So, adherence to majority rule is true of a parliamentary system of government. The reason is that the party having a majority in the legislature controls both the executive and the legislature from where the prime minister and ministers of his cabinet are chosen. The stability of this system also depends upon the ruling party controlling a reasonable majority in the parliament. Let's go over to question 5. 
Public opinion is a view that is A. Held by the majority. B. Active in the public realm. C. Widely publicized. D. No longer a secret. The right answer is A. Held by the majority. I also want you to know that public opinion is a view that is held by the majority as far as public opinion is consigned. The view must be held and expressed by the majority of the society. Question 6. The political neutrality of civil servants implies that they a, are not allowed to join any organization or group, b, have no dealings with politicians, c, are not allowed to be involved in partisan politics, d, are not allowed to vote. The right answer is C. Are not allowed to be involved in partisan politics. The political neutrality of all civil servants implies that they are not allowed to be involved in partisan politics. So, political neutrality is one of the main characteristics of civil service. This means that civil servants are not involved in partisan politics. They are there to serve any government that comes into power. Question 7. A major function of the Senate Independent Electoral Commission in Nigeria is the A. Registration of political parties. B. Conduct of elections into local government offices. C. Conduct of gubernatorial elections. D. Delineation of electoral constituencies. A major function of the State Independent Electoral Commission in Nigeria is the conduct of elections into local government offices. The local government offices are chairman and councillors. So, I'll pick B as the right answer. All right. Question eight. The principle of checks and balances empowers the judiciary to A. Invalidate the actions of the other arms. B. Administer the criminal justice system. C. Abrogate the law. D. Apply the law. The right answer is A. Let me circle it and also tick it. The principle of checks and balances empowers the judiciary to invalidate the actions of the other arms. For instance, the judges who can try government officials can as well declare a legislation ultra vows. Yeah. So let's take question nine. In a first past the post electoral system, a candidate is declared when a records the highest number of votes cast, b. obtains a two-thirds majority of the votes cast, c. obtains one-third of the votes cast, d. scores the aggregate of the opponent. The right answer is a. In the first pass the post-electoral system, a candidate is declared when he records the highest number of votes cast. Question 10. All right, this question says, the major, the major function of civil service is A, providing relevant information on government, B, keeping records of the activities of government, C, promoting the interests of civil servants, D, advising government and implementing its policies. The right answer is D. The major function of civil service is to advise government and implement its policies. Question 11. The pressure group that results to unconventional methods to achieve its objectives is called A. Anomic group, B. Institutional group, C. Promotional group, D. Interest group.
The right answer is um, A, anomic group. Anomic group is a type of pressure group that results to unconventional methods to achieve its objective. It should be observed that anomic groups are spontaneous, unorganized mob groups which are only interested in immediate achievement of goals or seizure of power. They use violence, housing demonstrations, strikes, e.g., students not group riot against Ike in the price of fear, etc. So let's look at question 12. Citizenship acquired through marriage is referred to as A. Honorary, B. Naturalization, C. Nationalization, D. Registration. The right answer is D. Registration. Let me take it again. So, citizenship acquired through marriage is referred, referred to as registration. This is a method by which women acquire citizenship through marriage. For example, a Cameroonian woman married to a Nigerian may register as a Nigerian and should take the oath of alliance and renounce her Cameroonian citizenship. Question 13. The method used to determine the possible outcome of an electoral contest is A. Press review. Plebiscite, C. Opinion poll, D. Referendum. The right answer is op opinion poll. Alright, opinion poll is a questioning of a number of people choosing by chance to find out general opinion about something or someone. In civilized societies, newspaper columns contain public opinions on government activities. Question 14. On the basis of its structure, a political party can be classified as indirect if a. its membership is acquired through other groups, b. it contests elections by proxy, c. it campaigns for votes through agents, d. it controls government indirectly. The right answer is a. On the basis of its structure, a political party can be classified as indirect if its membership is acquired through other groups. Question 15. How does the president relieve a minister of his appointment in a presidential system of government? A. In consultation with the legislature. B. After serving a full tenure. C. In consultation with the judiciary. D. By unilateral action. In a presidential system of government, the president relieves a minister of his appointment by unilateral action, which is D. When um, we talk about unilateral action, let's see it this way. It's simply going through the powers and functions of the president it should be observed that the president has the right to dismiss any member of his cabinet and can also reshuffle his cabinet. Question 16. The study of government essentially facilitates the understanding of the A, functioning of the entire social formation, B, organization of the executive arm of government, C, governance of human societies, D. Observance of fundamental human rights. The right answer is D. The study of government essentially facilitates the understanding of the observance of fundamental human rights. Question D. Sorry, question 17. In a parliamentary system, the functions of the head of state and the head of government are vested in A, the inner cabinet, B, an individual, C, two different individuals, D, the ministerial council. In a parliamentary system, or let me just pick the answer first, the answer is C, 
two different individuals. But I want you to know that in a parliamentary system, the functions of the head of state and the head of government are vested in two different individuals. This is a system which has a ceremonial or um, the titular head of state as president and a prime minister as a head of government and chief executive of government, e.g. that's what Nigerian practice between um, 1960 to 1966. Question 18. A collegial executive is a government in which power is vested in A. A. President, B. Monarch, C. Committee, D. Parliament. The right answer is C. Committee. A committee here is a number of persons who have been selected from a large body to deal with special business. Question 19. The unrestrained power of the state over its citizens is underlined by A. Sovereignty, B. Nationalism, C. Self-determination, D. Patriotism. The right answer is A. Sovereignty. Sovereignty, uh, sovereignty could be defined as the supreme legal power to make and enforce laws for people within a definite territory without any external control. Question 20. Now, this question says, one of the duties of the legislature is to A, implement laws, B, adjudicate disputes, C, promulgate decrees, D, exercise oversight. The right answer is D. Basically, the functions of the legislature under our constitution extend to the following key areas. A. Lawmaking. B. Control over state forms. C. Oversight over the other branches of government in areas that are, um, let's say, contaminous with the legislative powers. D. Receipts and um, disposal of petitions. E. Screening of nominees for executive appointments. F. Um, I think something like um, quite a judicial functions in indicting and impeaching the executive. ETC. So that's why the answer is D. Exercise oversight. Question 21. The independence of the judiciary can be undermined through the A. Politization of the appointment of judges. B. Appointment of the Minister of Justice as the Attorney General. C. Confirmation of the appointment of judges by the legislature. The payment of the salaries of judicial officers by the government. The right answer is A. Politization of the appointment of judges. B. Um, question 22. A common future of government is A. The separation of powers. B. The making of public policy. C. The independence of the judiciary. D. A written constitution. The right answer is B. A common feature of government is the making of public policy. Question 23. The citizenship of a country could be acquired through A. Parliamentary legislation. B. Birth and naturalization. C. Registration and arbitration. D. Presidential proclamation. The right answer is B. The citizenship of a country could be acquired through birth and naturalization. Question 24. Socialism is a mode of production based on A. State ownership of the means of production. B. Collective ownership of the means of production. C. National ownership of the means of production. D. Miss ownership of the means of production. The right answer is A. Socialization, um, socialism 
is a mode of production based on state ownership of means of production. Question 25. The civil service embraces all workers in A, all private corporations, B, public and private companies, C, government ministries, D, public corporations. The right answer is C. The civil service embraces all workers in government ministries. All right, so the civil service may... Okay, let me just say that um, the civil service embraces all workers in government ministries. And they may defy, uh, let's define the civil service as a body of officials who carry out the day to day business of government. They are actually skilled and permanent. They are also paid from the consolidated fund, either partly or wholly. Question 25 A meeting of the legislature is usually brought to an end with A, a dissolution, B, an adjournment, C, suspension. D. A prorogation. The right answer is D. A prorogation. Prorogation um, marks the end of a parliamentary session. It is a formal name given to the period between the end of a session of parliament and the state opening of parliament that begins the next session. Question 27. The type of government operated in Nigeria between October 1st, 1979 to December 31st, 1983 is called A. Collegial System of Government B. Presidential System of Government C. Unitary System of Government D. Parliamentary System of Government The right answer is B. Presidential System of Government Okay? Question 28 one of the legacies of pre-colonial Nigeria destroyed by the British was the A. Peace and harmony in the land B. Indigenous cultures of the people C. Education of the local people D. Nations farmlands So, the right answer is B. Indigenous cultures of the people Question 29 The expenditure of public funds by the executive in Nigeria is controlled by the A. Judiciary, B. Ministry of Finance, C. Legislature, D. President. The right answer is C. The Legislature. Question 30. Financial allocations to local government by the federal or the state government to supplement the cost of a project is called A. Revenue Allocation, B. Reimbursement, C. Statutory Allocation D. Matching Grants The right answer is D. Matching Grants Thank you very much for staying with me. Um, I'll be dropping more questions as we get close to your exam. That's JAMP 2023. Keep watching IDC Learning Center YouTube channel. Go through other videos I've dropped already. I wish you the very best. Bye.